everyone, so I'm back again with another video. This time around, I have part two of my Wii U video game collection uh, update video series. Uh, this one is going to be a short series because it's, well, only about, uh, I, I want to say just under 40 games. So part two is also the last part in this video game collection update series. Uh, we're going to be looking at the games in my collection in alphabetical order from the letter M through to the letter Z. I have a couple of special editions to show here as well, so uh, without further ado, let's just get right to it. Uh, first up is a game that I really love, a series that I've been playing for many years. Uh, I actually only started out with the Game Boy Advance version of this game, but the latest version here on the Wii U is also pretty much just my favorite version of it altogether, Mario Kart 8. Uh, pretty much in this series, every single release gets better and better and better. I don't think there's ever been a, a real misstep in this series. It just constantly builds on top and uh, becomes better with every installment. And I absolutely love uh, Mario Kart 8. Uh, next game was not that fun. Uh, it's a fighting game with uh, Marvel characters, but... Just the uh, the gamepad control for this game was just really annoying and pretty much involved no skill whatsoever. It's Marvel Avengers, sorry, Marvel the Avengers Battle for Earth, and I think I got this game for like ten or fifteen dollars, and it's not even worth that. The next game is Monster Hunter Three Ultimate. Uh, now the Monster Hunter series, I've tried on many occasions to get into it. I gave it a serious shot on the 3DS, and I just have I have a hard time with the series. I really want to give it the time of day, but it seems like it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of time, just more than I can actually uh, seriously give to this game. Next game, I got this at a thrift store, and I got it pretty much just because it is an uncommon game. It's NBA 2K13 on the Wii U. This is the last NBA 2K game uh, released on a Nintendo console, and because of that, it will be a sort of uh, collectible uh, game in my collection, uh, rather than a playable game in my collection. Next game is New Super Luigi U. It's just a... How can I do... Like, how can I explain this really other than the fact that it's a hard mode of New Super Mario Bros. U. Uh, you get a shorter time limit. Emphasis is put on Luigi, of course, uh, because this was the year of Luigi release. Uh, and it's pretty much the exact same levels from New Super Mario Bros. U. Uh, but again, you play as Luigi and a bunch of other char uh, characters. Mario's obviously missing, and uh, it's just it's just hard mode. It's it's just hard mode. It was a half price title, uh, just thirty bucks rather than sixty bucks, uh, which was the going price for brand new games at the time. Uh, but yeah, since then I think this has become pretty uncommon. Uh, not too easy to find and probably going for more than thirty dollars these days uh, Next game is another fighting game. I really sort of Got into the hype of this game Really really wanted to play it then when I got it it seemed a lot more complicated than I thought it would be and I've just been trying to figure it out, but not having too much luck with it uh, It's Pokémon tournament and uh, in this game, I've pretty much only played as Chandelure. Like, Chandelure's uh, my favorite Pokemon uh, in this game. And definitely one of my most favorite Pokemon overall, especially from the newer generations. Uh, but otherwise, I can't say much else. Uh, next game here is a game that, for some time, I wanted to pre-order this. I wanted to pre-order this special edition on the NIS America website. But... The price was just ridiculous. It would have cost me uh, as much as the game cost uh, to first have it converted to Canadian dollars and then uh, have it shipped to me as well. It would have just 
gone from costing uh, the American price to being as much as like double that. It was it was just plain stupid. Uh, but once it was released in Canada, just standard edition, I thought you know what I'll just get it. But then it ended up being way too expensive, so I waited a while and it dropped down to like forty dollars. It's Rodea the Sky Soldier, and the Wii U version also came with the Wii version of the game as well. And from my understanding, it was built as a Wii game and then ported to the Wii U. So, I mean, while it looks like an okay game and uh, it it is fun to play at moments, it's not that special, and you can still get this uh, fairly easily. Next game is a game that I got because it was cheap and in a series that I did have some fun with, but this game here, not as fun, it just lacks the appeal of the earlier games. It's Scribble Not Unlimited. Uh, now you think that in this series, just the next game and then the next game would be a lot better. They'd add a lot more words, a lot more things that you could create, but I don't know, this one here was just kind of disappointing. It felt like there was too much and not enough at the same time and uh, in a world where you can create just about anything that's kind of a weird uh, thing uh, to sort of experience that is both a lot and not that much at the same time just kind of weird uh, next game is a pretty fun uh, indie title that has been released on everything uh, the reason why I got the Wii U version is because there was an amiibo as well. Obviously, when you hear that, you know what game it is. It's Shovel Knight on the Wii U. Uh, now, I did want to get this for a couple other consoles as well, but I thought, you know what, I'll just get the Wii U version. And I really liked that it came with a thick, like, proper manual that had, like, full color like everything in here it's a really detailed manual and I just almost lost my receipt there uh, and you don't really see that in games these days anymore and what can I say about the game really that hasn't been said already it's a very fun platformer that plays uh, a lot like DuckTales and well you have a lot of other games uh, mixed in there too it's really an homage to 8-bit uh, games and it is very fun and pretty nice to look at as well, but also pretty hard at moments. Next game is a game that I played a lot. I've had a lot of good and bad memories about this game. Uh, definitely early on, trying to play online was hell. Lots of drop games, lots of uh, rage quitting. Uh, but in the end, it was a pretty fun game to play and uh, very enjoyable overall. Even when you lost uh, other than in moments where you, say, got disconnected, if you just lost, you knew exactly why you lost. There was no sort of gray area. You didn't think that it was, like, cheap that you lost or anything like that. It It's pretty much uh, a fun experience, but also hard, and you just... Whatever. It, it's Splatoon. Splatoon's really fun. Uh, I don't know if there are going to be any more uh, Splatoon uh, events that they would do like every few weekends. I think the last Splatfest that happened was the final one, but I uh, don't really uh, know if there are going to be any other events. Uh, now the thing about this game is that it really, really put emphasis on the online play, uh, multiplayer online that is, and uh, sort of moved away from the single player experience even though there was a lot of single player uh, gameplay as well just uh, as long as you had the amiibos as well it added uh, more difficulties I suppose to the single player experience uh, otherwise there was really no reason to play the single player mode other than getting a couple of items but the items that you got weren't even that special to begin with so um, it's mostly for the online experience and it was pretty fun for that. Uh, next game is, well, there are actually two games together and I do have 
the box for this as well, but it's out of reach right now. It's up on the shelf over there, and I forgot to grab it. Uh, two games that were packaged together, you can probably assume what that is, considering then my other video, uh, I talked about Bayonetta, and here they're in two separate cases. This game here is Star Fox Zero and Star Fox Guard. Uh, now, I have not played any of Star Fox Guard yet, I played some of Star Fox Zero, and definitely looks like a nice game, like, it looks nice, uh, but does it really innovate that much compared to uh, previous Star Fox games? Just a little bit. Like, I mean, they tried with the sort of transforming of the R-Wing, but otherwise uh, there's not much else to it. It's pretty much just copy and paste Star Fox experience. Uh, now, as for this Star Fox Guard, I think it's just supposed to be a tower defense game. Uh, I'll get to it eventually, but for now it's just way, way, way far back on the back burner. Uh, next two games, you know what, I'll lump these two together. Uh, they are Super Mario 3D World and Super Mario Maker. Uh, now I do have the cardboard box and art book that came with this as well, but again I forgot to grab those for some dumb reason. Uh, Super Mario 3D World the reason to get this really is because of Catsuit Mario. Like, that Catsuit is one of the best uh, power-ups that Mario can ever get. Like, it really, really took the game to a whole other level, and I really liked that power-up. Uh, I have loved a lot of power-ups in the past, but that one by far is my most favorite power-up. That and the, um, I suppose, if I remember correctly, I think it's a cherry and it doubles you, but I forget what it, what the exact power-up is, but the power-up that lets you sort of double your character and then quadruple, and then you can have a whole bunch of uh, the same character on the screen at the same time, and it, I really like that one. The other game, Super Mario Maker, of course it's make your own levels of Mario in either uh, classic 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, or... Uh, current Mario, I believe as well, and, oh, here, it says on the back, so, uh, Super Mario Bros, the original one, uh, Super Mario Bros 3, Super Mario World, and, uh, New Super Mario Bros U, uh, four art styles, and there was a ton to do in here, but it sucked actually playing other people's levels, for me at least, because while I do like a nice challenging, uh, Mario level, the levels that people were creating in this game were just ridiculous. They were pretty much uh, either hell is going on and you just do one thing and it carries you to the end, or you have to die a billion times to just get to the end of one level. So I sort of just stopped playing that. Next game, a game I love, a series that I suck at, uh, a type of game that I really do suck at but enjoy playing. Uh, fighting game, big game for the Wii U, Super Smash Bros for Wii U. Uh, now, in this game, I really love that they had the Wii Fit, uh, Wii Fit Trainer and the uh, three Miis. Love those characters, love to play as them. I have my own uh, sword me. I forget what they're called exactly, but a me with the sword, and then the Wii Fit Trainer, the way that I customized my Wii Fit Trainer, love, love, love to play this, uh, and I really do like that they did add a whole bunch of other characters later on, uh, do love playing Bayonetta in Smash Bros as well, uh, but it's been a couple of months since the last time that I played Smash Bros, so I do need to get around to it once again. Next game is also a fighting game that I haven't played in a couple of months. I uh, really did enjoy this, and I did like the uh, sort of, what do they call it, the mushroom battle that they added in this game. It's Tekken Tag Tournament to Wii U Edition, and in the mushroom battle, I think what happened, like, if I remember correctly, uh, there were mushrooms that pop up that either... Uh, increase your size or decrease your size so it was a regular mushroom and then a poison mushroom and uh, there were also Mario themed outfits in this game as well so 
really, I think this is the best version of the game to get. So if you're going to get Tekken Tag Tournament 2, you might as well get the Wii U version if you do have a Wii U, that is. Sorry. Uh, next game is another game that I did get the special edition of, and this one I actually do have it handy here. It's a pretty generic dungeon crawler, but when you see what it is really, you'll want to get it too. It's Token Raw Sessions uh, FE. Uh, this is the special edition box for it. It pretty much just came with an art book and I think some stickers and DLC. Um, not really that special uh, of a special edition, just really wasn't worth it. Uh, but this game here is a crossover between uh, sort of Shin Megami and uh, Fire Emblem at the same time. And it was pretty fun to play. I haven't finished this yet because it is, uh, it's, it's not that long of a game, but it does take a little while to get through it. And I just sort of need to get back to it. I got distracted by a whole bunch of other releases. In fact, I'm getting distracted by Yokai Watch right now because that just came out. Uh, but this is at the top of my sort of to-do list for video games. Uh, definitely uh, for the Wii U, that is, this is the game that I need to get to first before I get to any of the other games for the Wii U. But the same can be said about the next game here as well. I think this is pretty much a very close second. A game that definitely will take a lot of time, a lot of devotion, and I don't really play for hours and hours on end. Uh, on consoles at least uh, I just I can't sit for more than maybe one or two hours at a time so playing this game really will take up a bunch of time it's Xenoblade Chronicles X and for this I did get this special edition as well uh, this one is definitely a more substantial special edition uh, and it did come with a art book uh, sorry, uh, an art card, and the soundtrack on a USB uh, thumb drive, which is kind of a, a weird thing, but a pretty nice bonus. It actually is much better than if you were to have um, just like a download code for it. So I do appreciate that added touch. Uh, but this game, like I said, is going to take a very long time to play through, and I just don't have the time to put into this right now. Uh, I've had this for many months now, and I just haven't been able to find the time to actually sit down and uh, give this a good go. Now, the last game that I'm going to show you guys uh, in this nearly 20 minute long video, I will get through this really fast, I promise you, because it's not that good of a game. It was, I think, fairly recently re-released on the PS4 as well. It is a launch title for the Wii U, and I actually got this with my console. It's Zombie U, and uh, this was re-released, like I said, on the PS4 as just Zombie, uh, without the U, obviously, without the U, because that is obviously U as in, like, Wii U. Uh, it is a zombie survival game where uh, when you die, you just sort of pick up as another character and you sort of just continue on and it was kind of lackluster but it was still really scary uh at moments at least for me because i am a baby when it comes to zombie stuff and uh it really did get a lot of use out of the game uh the wii u gamepad uh really did take advantage of it so that was nice at least i'd like to see how it does play uh, on the PS4 as well, but I'm not likely to go ahead and buy that anytime soon. Uh, but it was okay, it was just kind of misplaced on the Wii U, it just didn't seem like a game for a Nintendo console at least. Uh, and with that, that's the last game that I'm going to be showing you guys in this collection update. Uh, as always, leave comments in the comment section below, anything you'd like to say, comments, questions, suggestions, ideas, anything at all, just put in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Check out my Facebook, Twitter, and website. They're all linked in the description below. And also linked in the description below is a link to my 500 subscribers contest. Check that out as well if you'd like. And that's it.
See ya.